Hey yo, what's up my little coders? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to send a push request in Java. But before that, let me start with a super quick recap of a theory. Okay, so what is a push request? A push request is one of the HTTP request methods which is used when we want to update an existing resource. You might know that HTTP put request method is also used when we want to update an existing resource. So what's the difference then between put and patch? One of the main differences is that a patch request allows a partial update of a resource. This is not the case with a put request because a request body of a put request should contain a complete representation of the resource. For example, imagine that you have an existing resource and this resource is a JSON with three simple attributes. If you want to update just one of these three attributes, and you want to use put request method for that, you still need to send the remaining two attributes as part of the same request, even though if they stay unchanged, because otherwise the unchanged attributes will be overridden with the default values, or in some other cases the request just would fail. If you would use a push request method instead, you would be able to send just one of these three attributes as part of your request and you will achieve the same goal with updating the resource. This will also allow you to reduce the network traffic and get slightly better performance. And this is the beauty of a push request. Okay, let's move on my little coders. To send a push request in Java, we need to have a REST API which would allow us to do it. For that, we are going to use today a service which is called restfulapi.dev. This service supports main HTTP methods, including patch, and it's free and doesn't require any registration, so it's perfect for learning and practicing. However, before sending a patch request to partially update an object, we first of all need to create this object, right? For that, let's try to use the post request method and let's just send the request first of all through the postman and then let's jump to the Java code. Okay. So if you send this request body to this URL, and if you would send a post request, we should create a new resource. It should generate a unique ID for us, and it should store the data which we basically have sent to this REST API. Let's try to do it. Let me copy this uh, post request URL. Let me go to the postman. Let's specify that we're sending a post request. Now let's also copy exactly the same request body. So if I go to body in Postman, and if I paste it here, and if I also change the type of the request body from text to JSON, because we're sending a JSON object and API accepts a JSON object, if I hit the send button after that, we can see that we successfully been able to send our post request and we created a new resource. The API generated a unique ID for us, and it basically stored the data which we have sent to it, right? Let me just quickly validate it by sending a GET request. If I copy this unique ID which was generated, and if I put it here, and if I hit the send button, yes, we can see here that we definitely stored our object correctly and our post request was legit. Perfect. Now let's try to use a push request method to perform our partial update. The URL of the push request will be the same as the URL of a get request, so we can just copy and paste it. Then if we change from get to patch, and if we say we provide as a body just one field and not the full representation of the object. So if you just want to update only the name of this object, let's say we want to update it to yo. And if you send this request, yes, we get a status code equal to 200, meaning that our request was successful. And you can see here that the name attribute was updated, but the data attribute, which represents like a JSON object, it stayed unchanged, so we didn't override it with any default values, and this is exactly what we wanted. If you would try to do exactly the same, but using a put request, data attribute would be just set to now. But yeah, if we send a get request just to validate that the name actually has been updated, yes, we can see here that the name of our resource was updated, so the push request was definitely successful. 
Now, let's try to do exactly the same, but in Java. Okay, in order to send a patch request in Java, let's first of all specify the URL of our patch request. And it will be exactly the same URL as we used here in Postman. So let's just copy paste it. Then let's provide a request body. So let's provide our fields which we're going to update. Let's just update the name attribute as we did in Postman. Okay, URL is ready, request body is ready. Let's put everything together and let's uh, prepare our HTTP request. Okay, so we are preparing our patch request. We are providing the URL of a patch request here. And we are specifying that the header, which has the name of the content type, is equal to the application slash JSON. So we are kind of saying to this REST API that our request body is JSON because this API expects a request body to be a JSON. And right now we have our request body of type JSON. So if we go to headers, we can see a header which is equal to content type. And here we specify that it's a JSON. If, for example, you would change from JSON to text, so it would also be updated in headers to the text. And if you try to send exactly the same patch request right now with different headers, you can see that we get an error, unsupported media type. So this API expects exactly a JSON and we need to provide a JSON to it. And the default value of this header is not a JSON, it's a text. So we need to override it here. Then after that, yes, we're specifying that we're sending exactly a push request, not like a post or put. Uh, we need to be specific here so that API knows that, okay, this is a push request and we'll handle it as a push request. And we are providing our request body. So now we prepared our request and we're basically ready to send this request to this REST API. Let's do it now. Okay, so here we are basically sending our patch request by calling a send function. And at the same time, we will store our response as uh, part of this like HTTP response variable, which we define here. With that, we can basically try to print our response status code. And we can also try to print the body, so the response body, which this REST API would send back to us. All right, if I try to compile this code right now, let's see if we will be able to successfully send a patch request. And yes, we get a status code equal to 200. And uh, we can see here that yes, our name was updated and our data stays as it is. So if I go back to Postman and if I try to send a GET request, you can see here that yes, we've been successfully able to send a push request and we did a partial update of our resource. However, guys, you can see here that, you know, we provided a request body as a string which represents a JSON. However, you know, we needed to manually type it. And since it's Java, and since it's object-oriented programming language, most probably you would like to send some proper Java objects, not like, you know, strings uh, which you need to construct yourself because, um, you know, how can you do it programmatically? So for that, let's create a simple uh, pod draw plain old Java object. Let's imagine that we are online shop and we are selling some products and we are using this REST API to store the data for our products. So if I create a simple product and if I basically provide the same attributes like name and data uh, to this uh, plain object. Okay, and if I also generate some getters and setters quickly. Then we basically have our um, object which represents this resource. Uh, we have it ready here. So let's try to update our resource by passing, you know, an object, not like a string which we constructed ourselves. All right, if I create product and if would say 
I set the name of this product to be, let's say, Yolo tool. And if this request body is basically now equal to this uh, product, you can see that, you know, it's impossible uh, because there are different types. In order to convert your object to a string, which would represent a JSON file, uh, we can use one external library. And this external library is a faster XML library. If we use it, and if we add it to our Gradle dependencies, then we should be able to leverage something what is called object mapper. This object mapper basically would allow us to convert a plain old Java object to the string which would represent a JSON string. If I just do something like this, object mapper dot write value as a string, and if after that I print this request body, uh, let me also comment out this code for now. If I do it, and if I run my code, you can see that yes, object mapper converted our plain Java object to the string which represents a JSON. However, you can see here that it converted this value successfully, right? But it also wrote a data attribute as a null value, because yes, that's correct. We have a data attribute here inside our object, but we don't do anything with it here, so we don't set it to anything. That's why it's equal to null, and that's why here, you know, it prints it as a null value. But as you might guess, if you send uh, these two attributes together, and if one of them is equal to null, the REST API would just, you know, overwrite the data value and it would set it to now as well. And this is not what we want at all, right? Because we just want to update only the name attribute, but we don't want to overwrite the data attribute with the default value. We can do something with that. So we can just go to our Java object and basically include one annotation, which also comes from the same external library. And this is just annotation, which is called JSON include. And here we can specify that we want to include not now values. Basically, what it means that um, when we will use our object mapper, it would not include any now values. So if I run my code now, you can see here that we only got not now values. So we would not overwrite any other data fields which we don't want to overwrite with the null values. Now we can uncomment our code and we can send a new request body and we constructed this request body from just a normal Java object. So if I try to run this code now, you can see that we've been successfully able to send a patch request. We changed the name and we didn't change the data attribute. So if I go back to Postman and if I send a get request now, you can see that yes, the value was updated successfully and nothing happened with the data attribute. So this is exactly what we wanted to achieve. And you know, this is exactly the beauty of a patch request. I hope guys that this tutorial was useful to you. If it was, please give it a like and subscribe and thank you and see you later guys. Good luck.